If you're looking for one single paint color for your entire home, this is the video for you. Today we're talking about 10 Sherwin-Williams paint colors that I adore. They're ultra versatile and flexible. And if you wanted to go for one single paint color, just for simplicity's sake, you will find your color in this video. If you're more into Benjamin Moore colors, I'm gonna link a video we already did in our description, another 10 awesome paint colors for your home. But let's go into the Sherwin-Williams side of things. I've put together three different categories for this video, clean, cool and cozy. A few colors from each, so no matter what kind of vibe you're going for, you're gonna find something here. So let's start with our clean category. These are colors that are gonna be for my minimalists out there that want something very straightforward, streamlined, less is more kind of a vibe. These are awesome blank canvas colors, so if you have a lot of artwork that you wanna feature, or just decor that you really want to accentuate and have the walls kind of blend in and just monotony, and I mean that in a good way, these are great, great choices. We're really starting strong here because alabaster is gonna be my first choice in this category. Very clean, color, but also nothing that is boring. It has some life to it, has some warmth, very subtle warmth, but it's there. An immensely versatile color. If you're already a subscriber or a Patreon member, you know I'm a huge fan of alabaster. I think it's one of those colors that can do no wrong. You can use it as a wall color, absolutely everywhere. You can even use it as a trim color because it does have some lightness to it. Although if you are using it on your walls and your baseboards, make sure you're using the right paint for each surface. So wall paint for the walls, trim color for the trim. They just happen to be alabaster. My Sherwin-Williams super fans watching will be very familiar with alabaster because it's been featured in a number of different color collections over the years. And I think that's for good reason. It's an awesome color. But let's say you wanted something similarly light, but maybe not quite as warm. Something that's a bit more toned down, maybe a bit of gray added in. I can't really recommend anything higher than Snowbound. Another awesome color, arguably as popular as Alabaster. And what it just gives you is a very slight cool aspect. Not blue leaning, more of a cooling down with gray. So still maintains its neutrality or its cleanliness. And I think it would suit certain styles even better than Alabaster. Those more transitional design styles that maybe have a bit of coolness added in. A soft grayed out white like Snowbound would be perfect in those cases, but really, in most cases. My third color in this clean category is kind of a newer color. It is one that isn't talked about enough, I feel. So it's one that I wanted to feature. It's called natural white. Very similar lightness. Again, all three of these whites or off whites, they have around an 83 LRV. So that means it's reflecting 83% of whatever light hits it, making it a pretty bright color, but not overly bright. Very much a Scandi sort of feeling color to use, I would say. And natural white, more so than Snowbound, way more than alabaster, it gives you a very clean feeling. Very minimalist, very pure. As an off-white, it's extremely balanced and stark and sterile, dare I say. So if that's what you're going for, if you're looking for something that is just essentially a soft white, natural white is definitely one worth looking at. Okay, so clean colors out of the way. Some would say those really weren't colors. <laughs> <laughs> but I know there are a lot of people that just want white or an off-white. Those are great options. But if you do want some saturation, if you want some hue, dare I say, not Hugh Grant, although I have nothing against him. He's a juggernaut of the romantic comedy scene. I wanted to start with some color. What about sea salt as an option? Now this is one that is not a traditional neutral, but I do think it has been popular for long enough that it is kind of part of the canon of interior design. This is an example of a color feeling neutral. If you use this as your main color kind of throughout your home, it will become the neutral because it is the dominant color in your space. And I think that's a good thing because this is a beautiful muted cool green that would really suit a coastal sort of feel, I think. But what I love about sea salt is its ability to work with natural woods. Maybe you have hardwood that is a little bit too warm, like you want to cool it down a bit. By going with something like sea salt, it will kind of have that cooling, calming effect. And I think it's one that maybe people sleep on as a main color to go, kind of go throughout your entire home, but you shouldn't because I think it's worth considering. In the same regard, if you want some cool coloration, but maybe you aren't too crazy about the green direction, you can go for some blue in reflection. Now this is a color that is very passive, very pastel, and it is subtle. But what I do like about it is it's cool enough to not feel like just a straight up gray because that's the trap sometimes where you get these 
these cooler neutrals maybe want to be blue, but aren't actually. They're just a kind of a cool gray. Reflection does have a noticeable blue undertone to it that I think differentiates it. Kind of like sea salt, it is going to feel like a color, even though it is very muted and passive. It's gonna give you an option that isn't completely just predictable, let's say, like a, like a beige. Kind of like the colors we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but we'll, we'll get there in a sec. Now my third cool color is maybe the least cool of the bunch, but it happens to be my favorite choice as an all over the house color. It's called Fleur de Sel, French. Uh -huh. Yikes. Uh, this is a color that I really enjoy. And I think it doesn't get talked about enough, at least in the YouTube comments. I don't really see a lot of people talking about it because it has been featured quite a bit, probably for the fact that it does so well at being one of those flexible, do anything colors. 72 LRV. So you're getting quite a bit of lightness, which is awesome. It looks like it's like a light creamy color that has been kissed with a bit of cool mint green or something. And that's just, just nice duality to it. You can even see in this Sherwin-Williams website picture here, it has just a lovely natural glow to it. There's still an undeniable amount of green and gray added in. So it has this great way of hoeing the line between both spectrums, both temperatures, which I think is a good thing. It gives you more versatility, which is what you need in a color that's going everywhere throughout your home. Cool colors, done. What about cozy colors? Maybe something that leans toward the warm side of things. Well, to start with, let's go with aesthetic white, which is the least warm of the three, but it's still definitely a beige leaning dove color and it has just the slightest bit of brown to kind of give it this taupey sort of undertone, which does translate sometimes to a purple undertone. It's very subtle. Some may call that cold or cool leaning, but I do sort of see it in the warmer spectrum just because of the fact that it does have that kind of beige base to it. So kind of like Fleur de Sel, but in the opposite way, a transitional color that's sort of warm, sort of cool. And I think those are the best colors to work with sometimes, but they can be the trickiest because they are kind of volatile. You're lighting your whole room, your space. It's really gonna impact how the color is gonna look to your eyeballs. So please, before you commit to any colors, test them out. Or you get a big can, get a really small can first. Now for something even warmer, even cozier, dare I say, I wanted to offer you a color called Stucco. So this is another beige, but it feels a little more saturated in its beiginess. It also has more of a yellow gold quality to it. Maybe a touch of green because of that combination of gray and yellow coming together. But especially compared to aesthetic white, you're getting more saturation here. You're getting more beiginess. You're getting more warmth, which I think is the goal with these cozy colors. And then a color that really does a great job at splitting the difference between the two is natural linen, which is a wonderful color that I've talked about in the past. It does have that sort of brown taupey quality that aesthetic white has, but it also has some of that nice beige, slightly gold leaning warmth that stucco has. I'm just combined in this wonderful color that I think is very versatile as an all over the house color. But in my opinion, none of them really come close to my probably best recommendation when it comes to an all over the house color. If you have no idea what to pick for your home, or maybe it's a rental property and you just can't just decide, you just want a color and just go with it. This is gonna be the color that I would recommend to a lot of you. You gotta at least check this video out because this is a color that you really do wanna try. And then if you don't like it, then you can kind of switch it up, but great place to start here.